Today's show is brought to you by ExpressVPN, one-click protection for all your devices. Securing yourself couldn't be easier, so just visit expressvpn.com slash funhouse. Welcome to Killer at Camp Kiki Mama, a slasher horror adventure RPG using the Dread System. The Dread System is a way of playing a tabletop RPG that doesn't use dice, stats, or character sheets. Instead, we use a device called the Tower. Anytime a character wants to do something that they might not normally be able to do, they have to pull a block from the tower. If the tower falls, you die. No saving throws, no do-overs, just dead. Over the next three episodes, I will be your game master and you will be following me and my group of counselors and employees as they try to survive the horrors and figure out the dangerous mysteries of Camp Kiki Mama. Today I am joined by my four counselors and employees. <laughs> Are you okay? You betcha. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I, I thought you was going to do more things. Yeah, I was I ready you were for yourself it. As game master. Yeah, I did. I just got really worried about him. He looked like he was about to die. I'm your game master, Armando Torres, and I will be taking my guests over the next three episodes through a very fun horror-based story. The way that this game works is, is that if you need to do something that your character could not convincibly just do without any amount of effort, you will have to pull from the tower. <laughs> from that tower. From that tower that you guys okay. have set up very precariously. If you refuse to pull, you can skip uh, whatever task you're trying to do, but you will fail, which means that you will suffer a consequence that makes the game harder to play in the long run. If the tower falls, your character dies. If you decide that you would like to sacrifice yourself to accomplish a task in an amazing way, you can choose to knock over the tower and you will succeed, but you will die. It's basically like going out in a blaze of glory. Are there any questions? Where's the closest home down buffet, young man? <laughs> and with that, I think we should get into our story. Deep in the forests of rural Oregon, along Lake Kikimama, sits a camp surrounded on all sides by a seemingly endless supply of nature with only one road allowing passage in and out. It's the perfect place to get away from it all. For decades, campers have spent their summers hiking, swimming, and enjoying the scenery. But all good things must come to an end. This is Camp Kiki Mama's last summer. Determined to go out with a bang, or at least one final paycheck, a ragtag group of counselors and employees have come together to run the camp one last time. Summer of 85 is going to be killer. After a long day of unpacking, setting up, and deciding who's gonna do what this year, Camp Kiki Mama's skeleton crew gathers in the mess hall for dinner. Sitting around a table, we have... What's up? Chuck Derricksworth, uh, I've been coming to this camp since I was just a little kid. Uh, worked my way up from just regular camp kid to counselor and then ultimately to lead counselor. Uh, people look to me with a kind of reverence. I'm kind of like a pillar of this camp community and uh, people admire me. And if you, hey, if you don't admire me, then that's your problem, bro. Chicks want to bang me too. <laughs> Sitting next to Chalk, we have... I'll tell you what you need to know, and that's what you need to know on a need-to-know basis. Wiley Scrimshaw. I'm the groundskeeper here at Camp Kiki Mama. I was here on this land before it was ever called Camp Kiki Mama. Before any of you dick licks were licking your daddy's dick. <laughs> and I... Oh, hang on. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I heard it. So we got a plan for this summer. We got to make this the best summer these campers have ever seen. Not that I care about these campers because I only care about one thing and that's grass. Not the kind I see some of you punks smoking out there. Smelling suspiciously <laughs> like the kind of grass those punks are smoking out there is. My name is Fenway. I live out of my van. I work here a couple months a year, try and make what I can. Yeah, if you call that work. Patrick, uh, sorry. We're supposed to be doing characters. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a burnout voice for four hours. Sorry, Fenway, go ahead, bro. I live out of my van, got kicked out of high school. This is the only job I could get. And sitting at the head seat of the table, we have... Oh, this, this is the head seat? I wasn't told that. I'm Casper Hogwood, you 
fuckers. Oh, and I own this camp, and I don't even, I don't like anybody on it, especially you young folks like you and you. Ooh, not you. You're, I, I see you wandering around the grounds here and there, but this is my camp. I own it. Sitting next to you, you find two other counselors. Uh, the first one, making goo-goo eyes over at Chalk, is 18-year-old Maggie Palmer. Hello. What's up, Mags? <laughs> it's really hot. And I know. I, I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> Maggie Palmer is as athletic as she is smart. Uh, she is the lead cheerleader back at high school in town, but here she's also the new lead counselor. What the fuck? Casper, what the fuck is going on, bro? Listen, I only own the place. This isn't just outside of my wheelhouse. You're the one that made me the lead counselor. I do that. People just hand me papers. I check them off. Congrats, you got the job. Good for you, I guess. Woo! Can I have a raise? Who are you? <laughs> no one's gonna fucking respect Maggie, bro. Um, excuse me? Everyone respects me. Uh, I don't. You're right. I don't either. I don't respect you either. Or I you, do. as a matter of fact. What about Scrimshaw? I don't want your respect. Sitting next to Maggie, uh, looking very, very disinterested, is 18-year-old uh, Benny Russo. That's my boy. Hey, what's, what's up? up? Young people fisting each other in front of me. That ain't what that means, old man, you fucking idiot. It's a Ugh. sign of respect. Yeah. <laughs> so as you all sit along the table looking at each other, uh, Maggie poses a question. Hey, do any of you guys know why the camp is shutting down? I haven't heard Not anything. the slightest clue. Probably because the fucking new lead counselor sucks. Well, at least this new lead counselor isn't going to let a camper die. Chalk. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yes, what are you talking about? Talking about last year when you let that camper drown because you were too busy checking out your muscles in the reflection. As I recall, they never found that camper's body, which means maybe he's alive or dead. I don't, this is not like a- I talked to Casper about it and he said everything was fine. I can vouch for that. <laughs> Listen, not everything's fine because I do hate kids, but boy, did you let that one drown. That is rather silly of you. <laughs> As I recall, whether you a camper, a counselor, a lead counselor, I don't even know what the fuck you do here. You stay away from that lake if you know what's good for you. How are we supposed to stay away from the lake? The yeah, lake a lot is of like it's very central thing. to the property, it's I would like agree. Most well, I would of agree the it is the focal point based. of the camp experience. I, you stay away from that lake. I'm actually like the head lifeguard. I don't I'm tired of making <laughs> homemade body bags. <laughs> What do you make them out of? You just buy them, bro. Yeah. Tired of hearing you're arguing uh, right from behind everybody, you hear the sound of a giant slam. As a man pushes his cleaver into the table, you turn around and look at a giant hulking massive man that you all recognize. It's me! Yes, you see yourself. There's a mirror in front of us, bros! You see a giant hulking massive man that you all know as Jeremy Fatso Hogwood, little brother, but only in age, nah. to Casper Hogwood and the cook at Camp Kiki Mama. Jeremy Asshole Hogwood. That's not it. it. <laughs> That's not it at all, Casper Dickweed <laughs> it's what, Hogwood. It's what father called you, and I'm going to respect his name. It's a family that is what father family. That is what father called me, yes. <laughs> the groundskeeping staff and the kitchen staff don't mix. No, we do not. You stay on your territory, and I'll stay on mine. What are you doing here in my mess hall, Scrimshaw? I need a hot meal more than you could ever know. He takes his cleaver up, and he points it at you, and he goes, you're on thin fucking ice, bud. The lake does freeze over time to time to thin ice, so stay away from that lake. <laughs> it's the middle of summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's August. Jeremy Fatso Hogwood is very tired at looking at you guys yell at each other and complain and not get along and accuse the new lead counselor of not being efficient enough. And he says, look, we all came here for one purpose, right? Camp. Jock, you love camp. You used to come every year as a kid on account of how your parents fucking suck. Scrimshaw. I can't really get a read on you. Fenway, you love camp. I, I keep seeing camp. you around here all the time and you look so delighted like you're walking on cloud nine, bud. I'm here all year. Yeah, I hear you all the time saying- I'm homeless. <laughs> and Casper, <laughs> our family me. has run this camp for generations. This is our land, our family's land. You gotta love this stuff, come on. I just love it because everybody's scared of the damn lake. I love seeing children in terror. <laughs> God, you are an awful person. 
Look, if we all band together, we can give these kids one last great summer. So what do you say? Camp Kiki Mama can never die. Bros, the simpleton is right. I don't know why you had to insult my intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cut of this guy's chip. I think if there's one thing more important than what our own self-interests are, it's making sure that I get a blowy from Maggie before the summer's over. I'm in, Jeremy Fatso, <laughs> simpleton. Maggie hesitantly puts her hand in. She questions it. Don't touch me. I'm like, okay. I put my rake in. I'm in, but I don't want to be a part of that blowjob thing. I'll be in that. Benny Russo puts his hand in and he goes, I'll be in and I'll be a part of whatever. You know. Camp Kiki Mama can never die on three. One, two, three. Camp, Camp Kiki, Kiki Mama, Mama can never, never die. die. I should have chosen a shorter, simpler phrase. That's on me. And just like that, the night is over. It's lights out. And now you have your first opportunity for an extra event. When you are playing Dread, uh, you will have opportunities to learn more about Camp Kiki Mama. It will require a pull, but it will give you more information and help you overall. Additionally, whenever you enter a new location, you can have the opportunity to make a search and it will give you the same thing. You might be able to find equipment, new information, etc. So you have an opportunity to make a poll and anyone can do this and it only takes one person. You can make a poll to learn new information. Would you like to? I'm gonna take an action that I'm pretty confident will not require the uh, tower. I'm gonna jerk off tonight. Let me just check here. I believe it's listed under my strength. Wow, it is. It's so, listed under there three times. Yeah, so. Yeah, he, you come so hard. And what did I learn? You also, you're staying <laughs> in the boys' cabin. <laughs> you don't have like a separate room. So you're in a room with two other men. Yeah, they're fucking asleep though. Who cares? I'm not. When I say lights out, it's fucking lights out, okay? I have a lot riding on this camp. If this closes, it's real bad for me. I, I would I would like to make a poll. Okay. I made a poll. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Careful now. Oh, that's not gonna <laughs> Yeah, this whole game is based around pulling blocks out of that thing. Good thing we stacked it against ourselves before we even started. <laughs> yeah, even better that this first one was completely optional. Oh, great pull, Patrick. Because Patrick was able to make a pull, you all get to experience this first optional event. The sun has fully gone down, but by the moonlight and scattered lights around the campsite, you can see Benny Russo sneaking out of the supply room before heading back to his bunk. Is that Benny? No. What are you doing? Nothing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Are you in the bunk? I, I saw you through the window. <laughs> so I see, I see Benny Russo doing this. Yeah. I go, oh hell no, oh hell no, that's my territory, that's my territory. So I go to Fenway's van, mm -hmm. and I knock knock my rake on the van. Fenway, are you sleeping in your van? It sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the van. I got a quick question for you. I'm not gonna make you pull for this. Mm -hmm. You got a sweet thing painted on the side of your van? Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's another van. Kind of a wizard. Is it a wizard It's a van? wizard holding a crystal ball, and then coming out of the crystal ball, it's like a, a big dragon. So you guys it are in the car everything. lot, and you wrap on, uh, well, you rake on Fenway's van. Get up, you low life. What's going on? What do you want? You got a situation. What? I don't know, that... Boozo, Buzzo, Bobo, whatever the hell his name is. Benny? That's the guy's I'm raiding the supply closet. What do you want me to do? I want you to march right over there and get him by the scruff and get those supplies back. Tell him a thing or two. Uh, all right. I'll come with you, but I'll be doing stuff. Uh, fine. I'll be busy. Yeah, okay. So you have to handle it. Okay, so you guys, are you following? I'm, and I'm behind him. Okay. <laughs> I'm, so ten, I'm ten paces, paces behind him. Ten paces behind. Yeah. Okay, so you're just out of yeah. earshot as Fenway makes it to the boys' cabin uh, to confront Benny Russo. Hey, what's up, Fenway? I can't fucking hear a goddamn thing you're saying. They saw you stealing shit. They saw me stealing it? Yes. They just go, we go, we go, we go, we go, we go, we go. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm raking and I'm watching. I, I go talk to Scrimshaw. No, hey, hey, he's cool. Yeah, I was. He's cool. Doing he was getting some. He was getting some stuff to fix up the the cabin. The the, the hinges are leaky. He was looking for some WD-40. Are you accusing me of having leaky hinges at this camp? Absolutely. Just open the door. You can hear him. Benny Russo opens go the door try. and you hear. See. You dick lick sabotage these hinges. How would I make a hinge 
creaky. You've been neglecting this camp is why these hinges are creaky. I have only given my soul to this camp. I, I'm tired of being fucking accused. I'm going to bed. If I want the hinges creaky, they're going to be creaky. All right, look, I won't. <laughs> but I don't want them creaky, so fix those damn hinges. Okay. Benny uses WD-40, sprays it. He tries closing it, and you hear, it's better. He goes into the boys' camp, hops into bunk, and he falls asleep. I get on my rake, and I ride away. <laughs> Scrimshaw puts the rake between his legs and rides home like a, a witch on a broomstick, leaving a trail of rake the behind rake, him. The rake does a lot. It's like a Swiss Army knife. Of yeah, rake. no. Okay. Yeah. It's got wheels. I go. I uh, go back to my van. So everyone goes to sleep. It's lights out for the whole camp. Everyone is snuggled up in their respective bunks. I'm on my or toilet. Vehicles. You're on the shitter, and you all get to sleep relatively easily. Wait, are you asleep on the shitter? Yeah. All right, he and you all get to sleep that. relatively uh, easily. Most mornings we find him in the outhouse, uh, passed uh, out. Until around midnight, when you hear a deep, blood-curdling scream coming from the mess hall. Ah! As you each shoot up in bed, you realize it's darker than normal. All of the lights outside of camp are completely out. Luckily, you've each got a flashlight in your inventory. What do you do? I wake up on the shitter. Who's that? I take my flashlight out of my pocket. I peek out the window, shining it into the darkness. You see nothing. Ah, I should probably open my eyes. <laughs> I walk from my van to the boys' cabin because I don't want to go over there by myself. I want to get. The, I want to see what everybody, if everyone else heard it, or if I'm just, you know, having an episode. I go over to uh, Chalk. Say, okay. Did you hear that? Don't fucking touch me, bro. I, I what's, didn't. What's up? I didn't touch. What's going you? on? Did you what's happening? That? I was sleeping. I was like fucking out of it. I feel like I know what was going on. But Chalk uh, is actually suffering from a small amount of dehydration because of how hard he nutted. I said, did you not hear that scream? No. What scream? There was like a horrible scream coming from the mess hall just now. We should. Someone should go check it out. You all. Everyone at camp hears another scream. Oh God! Oh fuck! Ah! That sounded like Benny. Benny's right next to you, and he goes, "I appreciate the concern, bud." Right here. Casper's gonna come wandering down the path towards the boys' cabin. Chalk, haven't I told you to keep your climaxes to a low volume? That wasn't me, boss. What? No, like I was like 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 an hour and a half ago, bro. Scrimshaw, what are you doing? Well, my dog Tortellini is barking, mm -hmm. so I calm calm Tortellini down and I go back to sleep, baby. Go back to sleep. And I sing him his little song that puts him to sleep. And Tortellini, my boy, I love you. Just sleep, Tortellini, my boy, I love you. Go dream. And then I get my crowbar because mm -hmm. I've, I've heard, you know. I've heard screams of this camp before. Okay. And it's never led to anything good. So I get my crowbar and I strap it to my rake, swing one leg over the other as one is wont to do. And then I take the rake and I follow the path to the mess hall. Okay. So you're on the way to the mess hall. Maggie Palmer is out of her bunk and goes, did you guys hear that? Yeah, what the hell was that? I don't know, but it sounded like it came from the mess hall. Y yep. <laughs> That's good, yeah. I mean, this is very scripted dialogue that I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think we should check it out, but if this is just some sort of trick by Maggie to blow me, I'm gonna be pissed. That seems like a really weird way to <laughs> trick someone into giving them a blow Maggie job. seems to hide some kind of notebook behind her back. <laughs> Cause yeah, trick weird, right? I feel like there's simpler ways. All right, let's go check out this flipping mess hall. As you enter the mess hall, you can see lying in the center is the bloody limp corpse of Jeremy Fatso Hogwood. His apron is torn almost in half by a deep bleeding gash. He lies dead on the floor holding his cleaver. He isn't breathing. By the look on his chest, you can tell that he was attacked with something very sharp and very heavy. Oh, fuck, no. Oh, well, everybody back to bed. Oh, well, there's a dead guy here. Yeah, he clearly committed suicide. Who commits suicide like that? With a, he used his cleaver to kill himself, probably. Maggie Palmer goes up to the body and looks at it and goes, it looks like there are several small cuts around important arteries and one giant cut in the center of his fucking heart. How the fuck do you know all that? Nice fucking job, Sherlock. Because I'm training to be a vet. So are you saying you think that someone murdered Fatso? Well, I would say that a deep gaping hole in your chest is not normal, natural causes, Chalk. Why, what would they possibly have against such a simpleton? Fucking look at him, he was clearly murdered. He stabbed like four times. Well, he must have had his mac and cheese. God damn it, he's dead. Can't be fucking talking to making 
talking shit yeah, on him. Maggie and that's Palmer, what it is. We ain't gonna be talking about this. We ain't gonna be talking to this to no authority. We can't co- him. you wanna cover this up? No, I'm- what I'm saying is... They- we talk. Oh, Wiley's here. Look, look. <laughs> I know there's suspicion already cast on me. Cast no one said that. We yeah, know. <laughs> Benny, no Benny said looks at you and he goes, that's a really see. fucking suspicious look, thing to say. Look, I know I'm already suspect number one here. Cause that's, the cooking- There's no. a natural rivalry between the cooking staff and the groundskeeping staff. I know that that's how things go down, but I tell you, we take this to the authorities. This whole camp's getting shut down before the season's out. I've been to this camp for a long time as a camp- er, and as a counselor. And no one's ever died here before. Look, you little dick lick, you ain't been to this camp a uh, fraction of the time I've been here. You got hired two, two months ago. Does it say that on my paper? <laughs> yeah, hey, Fenway, you remember there, there, there was one death on yeah. the old Chalk, lake. there's that kid that Chalk let no. drown because no. he wasn't doing his yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, job. Right. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no. You let no that way. fucking kid die. If a kid had died on my watch, I would have heard about it. Why weren't you fired for that? Because I'm too integral to the way this camp works. Benny Russo is actively smoking a joint and he goes, I don't know, man. They really don't f fire anyone for any reason. <laughs> this place is fucking awesome. I take the joint from Benny Russo and I say, I'm going to try to, I'm going to call the cops. I was going to say, Fenway, Fenway does the uh, Pepe Le Pew <laughs> and then floats to the <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> While you guys are arguing, Maggie tries to turn on the lights and goes, Hey guys, the power's out. I run this ship like it's just a tight ship and that power didn't go out on my watch. That power has been cut. There is one generator on camp and it is located in the supply room. We should go over there and see about turning it back on or something. I want, let's all, let's go together. I think we should split up. No, we'll cover no, more ground. Oh God, no. Fenway, I need you to carry me on your shoulders. First, we need to put this corpse in a body bag. Do you have one on you? I do, as a matter I of fact. It's homemade. Would. Before we get rid of this corpse and tamper with the evidence of the scene, we have to be careful. I'm gonna pee on it. <laughs> Don't, why would you do why? that? What is the point of It'd that? Be fucking hilarious. That's not fun. This is a dead <laughs> man. This guy was our friend. <laughs> Benny Russo hits not the door and he goes, it would be pretty fucking funny though. <laughs> Before will you investigate the body then. I investigate his holes. Well, I'm not even gonna make you pull for this. He has a giant gaping hole in the center of his chest where he was definitely hit by something very sharp and very heavy and it is gushing blood. I'm very upset. How do you think he died? Heart attack? Did the killer leave some origami clue or something inside of it? I don't see it on my origami? shoes. Origami? Yeah, get yeah, your the fingers other. in there. No, it's Fenway. a giant hole in his fucking chest. All right, let's get the bag. Let's get the generator turned on so we can see what we're doing so I'm not just digging around in a man's holes <laughs> in the pitch black. Okay, so you guys make your way from the mess hall to the supply room. Camp Kiki Mama is powered by a single generator that is located in the supply shed. It has been known to go out from time to time and it takes two people to restart it. When you arrive at the supply room, it becomes very clear that the generator didn't just go out. The panel on the machine is wide open and the fuse is missing. Normally this would be a very quick fix. You could replace it with another fuse, but those are missing as well. In fact, a number of things can be seen missing from the supply room. The extra fuses, a pair of gardening shears, the ax used to chop firewood, and several burlap sacks. However, the lock is unbroken meaning that whoever raided the supply room had a key. Again, whenever you enter a new location, you have a couple of options. You can do a search, which will cost you nothing, but probably won't find you anything unless you have like an eagle eye, or you can make a poll to do a thorough search, which can help you find items, key pieces of information, and other stuff as well. I huddle in the corner and say, no, fuck, fuck, fuck. Last night, some dick lick named Benny was raiding my supply room. No, no, hold on, hold on a second. When I left the room, the power was still on. That's how you were able to see me. There were lights here. We've been over this. He was getting something to fix the hinges. I was getting the WD-40. People go to the supply room. That's not suspicious in and of itself. Yeah, it's got supplies. I mean, I, I need to search this premises because this is my territory okay. here. If you want to research the supply room, you will have to make a poll. I keep forgetting Good how, luck, Scrimshaw. how oh, fucked God. the tower looks. Oh, it's terrible. Why do you always pull from the sides? The middles are so... I'm like, literally rooting down. for you to die, and you are causing me so much grief. Oh. Okay, that is a successful poll. So as you look around the supply room, you find a couple things. You find a first aid kit, you find a baseball bat, and a rowing oar. A rowing or what? 
Oh no, the tower fell. Chalk died. No, it's up. No, it's up. <laughs> and I'm not pulling. So you find a first aid kit, which can be used to heal up basic wounds, uh, but it can be used to heal up massive wounds if you're good at healing people. You have a baseball bat, which can be used as a weapon, and you have a rowing oar, which can be used with a boat or as a weapon as well. So are we thinking that someone is actively trying to kill and sabotage the people here? I can't Kiki Mama. Sure, looking that way, and it, it definitely seems somebody who had access to the supply room. Who wants the bat? I grab the first aid kit. I'll just give him a whack with my trusty cane. I'm gonna head back to the boys' cabin. I need to grab something. You're heading back to the I boys' really cabin think alone. We should all yeah, stick yeah. together. But alone. okay. I don't okay. trust any stuff. of you fuckers. Are you going to jack off again? Maggie looks at you and goes, "Shouldn't we call the fucking cops?" That's what I was trying to do earlier. There's no power. Maggie knows something that apparently the rest of you don't know. The only phone at Camp Kiki Mama is located inside Mr. Hogwood's cabin. It is independently powered by a single telephone line that runs all the way back to town and does not require power from the generator. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, Casper Hogwood would also have this information. Yeah, I do that. I told you, no cops. We're calling the cops right now. So you and Maggie seem to be going over to Mr. Hogwood's cabin. You're going over to the boys' cabin. Scrimshaw, Probably Hogwood, where are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm still in the supply room. I got to catch up. I'm going to go back to my cabin, too. I'll try and get there, too. I'll make sure they're not going through my stuff when they're using my phone. I need to go back to my shack. Okay. This shit's, go, shit's going down, and I don't I don't trust any of these people. Scrimshaw is going back to his shack. Uh, he does so. Chalk is going back to the boys' cabin. Maggie, Benny, Fenway, and Hogwood are all going back to Mr. Hogwood's cabin. Okay, so you get inside of the cabin, you look around, and it looks exactly like you think it would. It's messy, it's dusty, and it's covered with antique furniture that looks like it was probably pretty cheap when it was new. Why is there so much clown art on the wall? That's vintage. <laughs> you don't touch that, vintage you. Vintage what? <laughs> There's like 13 clown paintings Listen, what on makes the wall. You, what makes you little happy? statues everywhere. You little stoner. What makes you? What brings you joy? Clowns Ooh. make me happy. Why? I like to look at them. And you paint them yourself. <laughs> Most of them. So now that you're inside of this room, you have a couple of options. Again, you can search around, uh, or you can do a thorough search, and you might be able to find some useful items. I go straight for the phone. After picking up the phone, you realize that there's no dial tone. Someone's cut the line. What? The wire is shredded like it was cut with something large very quickly. Who's fucking with my phone? Maggie Palmer is pacing around the room, looks terrified, and is basically of no help. Does anyone in here know... Uh... I don't know, basic electronics. <laughs> I look at Benny and I say, you? Benny does not know how to do it. Okay, anything. got it. It's worth a shot. Benny is the most useless person you okay, have ever cool, known. Cool. But he does roll a solid joint. Do I know what's in my own cabin? You do. What's in my cabin? Looking around your cabin, you know that you have a few things. You have a hunting rifle with one round in it. And you Ooh. also have a folder tucked Saving away in your desk himself. that reads top secret information. Don't look at that. <laughs> Just more clown art. Exactly. It's unfinished. I don't let anybody look at my unfinished work. So we don't know, though, that he has that stuff. No, okay. only he does. Well, there's nothing here. <laughs> okay. We're going over to the boys' bunk. As you enter the boys' cabin, everything is still dark. Nothing seems to have changed from the last time you were here, and it's going to be difficult to find anything. Chalk goes back. He feels his way back to his bunk, and then he sits down on the edge of it. And then he pulls the sheets over his head and starts to weep. <laughs> We're gonna fucking die. That fucking kid from the lake, he's fucking dead. He's, there's someone's coming to back to fucking kill me. And I'm gonna fucking die. And I'm not gonna get my dick sucked. It's gonna, <laughs> fucking, it's gonna be the fucking worst, man. I'm fucking, I'm gonna lose, I'm losing my shit. And then he tries to gain Kane's composure. Okay, okay. Stay focused, bro. Stay focused, bro. And he, he, he looks underneath his bunk. Underneath Chalk Derricksworth bunk is the axe that was missing from the supply room. <gasps> Fuck, what am I gonna fucking do? What am I gonna fucking do? Uh, do I take it? Do I leave it? If I take it, they're gonna think that I did it, but I didn't fucking do anything. Man, I was jerking off. <laughs> I've got an alibi. <laughs> You it's all over these sheets. I'm gonna have to tell them that I jerked off, and then they're be like, "Why are you jerking off? Are you getting blowies?" And I didn't. Not getting. I've haven't gotten, haven't gotten any blowies for like fucking weeks, man. For your Emmy consideration, James Willems <laughs> as Chuck Derrick right. Swart. Okay. All right. Goal: stay alive. Uh, so I'm gonna. I go, I'll take you the axe. I'm taking the axe. Okay. So you I'm can grab the, the axe, axe to your inventory. And then I grab the axe and I just sit back down on the bed. 
quietly watching the exit. <clears throat> okay. Back in Scrimshaw's cabin, you enter your own cabin. It's got clowns all over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the door to your shack is swinging in the wind, as it always does. The creaking noise is the only thing that you can hear piercing the suffocating silence of the night. As you enter the rickety building, you see that the walls are covered with crosses and Bible scriptures because it is the hovel of a madman. Looking around the shack, you can see uh, a couple of gas canisters filled with gasoline. One is labeled motorboat, one reads generator, and the last one just says drinking gas. Where's Torlini? He there? Tortellini is in, uh, it's basically, I don't want to call it a studio because that seems like um, a compliment for your house, yes. but it is one giant one room, room with a door in the back. Yes. Tortellini, we got a, we got a, we got a situation here, Tortellini. I really don't want to get pushed off my, my living situation here. Tortellini, he gets it. He like gives me a nod. And then I put his little pack on him that has all his like little supplies and then Tortellini, takes a knife and he puts a knife between his teeth. And I'm like, Torlene, we gotta, we gotta move, we gotta move. Cause I know that there's a ham radio in the boathouse. Okay. Power's cut. I'm like, there's, so there's something going on here. That I trust them to not get that phone call made, but I gotta go and I gotta sabotage this ham radio. There's a saying at, at Camp Kiki Mama, keep it to Kiki Mama, <laughs> settle it. Settle it on the land. There is a phrase. In mm -hmm. fact, most campers will wear a shirt that say Camp Kiki Mama. Keep it in Camp Kiki Mama. Settle it here on the land. <laughs> Settle it no on, cops. on the land. No <laughs> cops. But the thing is, like, this is all happening, but my head is just swimming. Yeah. The voices that I hear, they've just been louder than ever lately. So you feel everything swirling in your head. You can hear a voice speak to you very softly, almost as if it's hitting the back of your mind. What's it telling me? and then it's gone. What could it mean? You hear the voice that comes back and it goes, I, it's pretty fucking obvious, I mean, it would burn. Okay, anyway, see you later, dog. And then it's gone. Burn the evidence. <coughs> burn the evidence. The ham radio. Burn the ham radio. Okay. Got are it. you gonna make your are you taking gasoline and making your way to the boathouse? I take my drinking gas, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and then Torlini and I we're making way for the boathouse that has the ham radio in it. Clutching the axe. Like it's like t terrified. Chuck goes, holy shit. We can use the fucking ham radio to call for help. I should go to the boathouse. Everyone else is still in Hogwood's cabin. When Scrimshaw walks past, you will be able to see him if you're paying attention to to that. If you are paying attention to the to the outside of your cabin though, I will say that uh, you will not be paying attention to the rest of the people who may be snooping around your cabin. I'm not looking outside the cabin, but Old Casper says, Oh, the phone's not working. I do know of the ham radio in the boathouse. Maybe we should use that. Hey, Fenway, I don't think you knew this, but there's a ham radio in the boathouse. Maggie really? Maggie looks at you and goes, Yeah, everyone knows there's a ham radio in the boathouse. Yeah, you fucking idiot. Oh, why don't I know this? Torlini and I are, are making our way, and Torlini goes, Radio? <laughs> <laughs> I go, yeah, Torlene. How did you know there's a ham radio in the boathouse? You hear the voice of your dog, and you're not sure whether it's something that your brain made <laughs> up or real life. We should burn the radio. So are you going to also make your way to the boathouse? Yeah, I, I suggested to the room, but I'm going to do it too. I'll mosey <laughs> my way over there. As you make your way to the uh, to the boathouse, you see that Maggie is sticking back for a second in your cabin. What are you doing? I'm sitting there and I, I pull uh, Benny over and I say, hey, no. the archery range is right next door. The archery range is right next door. While everyone else is going and doing their shit, let's just go grab a bow and some arrows. I like the way you think. Right? Yeah. Okay, so you make your way to the archery range. Back at the boathouse, we have Chalk Derricksworth showing up, still holding the axe. Yeah. I see Chalk. Oh, hey there, Chalk. Is that your phone line cutting brother smashing axe you got hold there? Oh, uh, no, no, no. This uh, this isn't my axe. I found it. Oh. Yeah. What about? You, you seem to have just gone back to your cabin and just, uh, just found that, huh? Uh, yeah. At first, I went back to my cabin, and then I was like, wait a minute. Something doesn't feel right. So I, I checked, and it was like over by like the girl's cabin. Oh. Yeah. And so there's like an axe there, and I'm like, whoa, that's weird. I should probably like grab it and like show it to Casper because that's like, whoa. As you finish up your sentence, Maggie, who is out of earshot and is now walking up to the group looking very distraught, uh, has not heard your accusation at all. Mm. But we should keep it on the low down. 
Before uh, we continue here, going over to the archery range where Benny Russo is hanging out with Fenway. You're at the archery range. It is sort of just like an empty lot with a bunch of targets. And then on one side, almost set up like a uh, barricade are a bunch of haystacks where there are bows, arrows, and then some other fun stuff as well. There's a crossbow that doesn't actually work, but it looks pretty cool. It's like you can take a Polaroid picture with it. You can take a bow and three arrows as well. Okay, you can carry. I do that. Benny goes, hey man, should we tell them that we have the extra fuses? Uh, I, I, yeah, remember how we got, <laughs> remember how we had this plan for us to kind of like come here and like steal this some this shit. This part I know about. So that we could like sell stuff. Well, uh, I know that I said I wasn't going to, like, go overboard with it, but, like, I kind of raided the supply room a lot. I got some garden yeah, shears no for shit. our little project. You almost got us caught is what you fucking did. Yeah, well, I also got us, like, five extra fuses, and that's, like, fucking right, worth a lot of money. If they find out that we took the fuses, we're going to look suspicious as shit. Okay. Go over to the supply room. Uh huh. Go around the lake, go through the forest, our spot, cross the bridge. They all just left to go to the lake house. Put the fuse back in and then sneak back. Okay. To the cabin, though. I'll meet you at the boys' cabin. <laughs> I love the part where I don't get caught. The problem is, is that there is ostensibly, which is the only big word I know, a killer on the loose and you want me, and he points at the pitch black forest that you are telling him to walk through you want me to fucking walk through that forest that's like several miles worth of walking it is yeah this oh, okay. is not to scale oh, okay never mind <laughs> i made everything very big all right look maybe it's not the but maybe it's not my best plan but okay. we got to find a way to do this without people getting on to it well hey i don't know if you knew this or not but this is a ham radio in the boathouse I, I've just, I'm just learning that I'm the only one who doesn't know this. What are you fucking me? Everyone knows that there's a ham radio in the boathouse. Everybody knows there's a ham radio. Cutting back to the boathouse where there is, I don't know if you knew this, but a ham radio. The inside of the boathouse is dusty and covered with cobwebs. The walls are lined with canoes. In the center of the decrepit old shed sits the old motorboat, although its gas tank is empty. It has been exactly one year since it was taken out of the water. After the accident, it just didn't seem right. There is also a radio that requires power from the generator. I'm starting to sweat. I'm starting to sweat seeing this boat. I don't. Oh no. What? What did you want me to? What did you say to me? What do you want me to do? You hear nothing. <sighs> this is when you when you want them. They're never there. Isn't that always the way, Tortellini? You hear the voice of God. He goes, "Burn." Yeah, oh, Tortellini, you hear that? I didn't hear anything. All right, Tortellini, you watch the perimeter. I'm gonna. And pour the gas. Tortellini lies down and falls asleep. Oh, Tortellini. <laughs> he does his best. What kind of dog is Tortellini? He's a hound. Okay, a hound. He's okay. A hound. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I was thinking it. like a chihuahua. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no I like that. He's like yeah. a basset hound. Kind wow. Of. Okay. Yeah, he's low to the ground. Reconnaissance. Yeah. Tortellini. So I take the ham radio and I put it in the middle of the boat. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use the wood, just light the whole thing up. The motorboat is made out of metal. Ooh. In fact, everything else in this room is made out of wood. It's going to put a dent in my plan. <laughs> except for it. Also, just to describe the boathouse a little bit, it's basically like a big room uh, with a door that you can enter from. And then one entire wall has these doors that are locked that you could uh, open that will allow you to get the boat into the water. Okay. Tortellini, I say, Tortellini, does, does do ham radios burn? And he's asleep. He's just, <laughs> well, I guess I'm gonna, I'm still gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to burn this radio. Okay. So I pour some pour some gas on it. Uh, you are going to need to make a pole to pour gasoline uh -oh. on it, and another pole to uh, successfully light it without burning yourself. Here comes our first death. <laughs> Steady hands, you old coot. <laughs> Jesus. You don't have to make the second one. You can also choose which poles are for which thing. So you can successfully pour gas all over it, and you can light it sloppily. Okay, I successfully poured the gas on it. Okay. We're like three poles away from not having any options. Ooh, real stuck in there. This reminds me of my night on the shitter. You can abandon a pole if you'd like to. Oh, oh my god. My, oh Heavens my to Betsy. So, you successfully take the gasoline and you pour it all over the ham radio. Luckily, you are only uh, you are able to do it with minimal spillage. 
Uh, and then you take out a lighter from your pocket and uh, you hear a voice that says, burn. Do you want to drop the lighter and set it on fire? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Outside the cabin, Chalk Derricksworth, Maggie Palmer, and Mr. Hogwood enter to see old man Wiley Scrimshaw holding a lighter over the ham radio that is covered with gasoline, which, by the way, may have already ruined the radio <laughs> because you did pour a liquid on top of 80s well, electronics. Well, those things can withstand anything. Okay. You know, who knows? Scrimshaw! What, you having a bonfire or something? You know the creed of this camp, which I already forgot. What did I say before? Camp Kiki Mama, leave it at Camp leave Kiki, at Kiki Mama. Kiki Mama. It stays here, stays settle it on the land. Like, you, know the the you know the creed of this camp. This whole place is gonna go down if we get the authorities involved. I gotta, I gotta burn this thing. Do you burn it? Don't Bro, make, stop! <laughs> don't make me sick. Don't do it! Don't make me sick tortellini on you. What tortellini? There's nothing else here with you. <gasps> what? <laughs> You're the only one in here, what? bro. You what? can see Tortellini, a dog that you can definitely see, but everyone apparently cannot, looks up at you and goes, Oh my. <gasps> what are you saying about Tortellini? I, what Tortellini? What are you talking about? There's no Tortellini, bro. My hound. There's no hound. It's just you. You've always lived alone. We could use an arm like this in the groundskeeping department. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> Was to my beautiful Tortellini a figment of my imagination this whole time? Everything I thought I knew was a lie. Oh wait, never mind. There he is in the corner. You see a dog. <laughs> oh, <thank> <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, it was dark. Totally. You see a hound who just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was dark. <laughs> yeah, but totally. Don't make me do it. Don't make me burn this ham radio. Otherwise, we swear here and now, no cops involved. We'll settle this here. Uh, Camp Kiki Mama. Settle it on the land. Keep it on Camp Keep Kiki Mama. Settle, settle it on, on the land. land. No, no cops. cops. And then across the back. No knocks. No knocks. knocks. Tell me. Knocks. Swear to me. Swear to me. While this is happening, uh, you guys are walking back to the boys' cabin to collect the stolen goods that Benny Russo is keeping underneath his yes. bed. And you can hear a large amount of screaming. The first thing that you hear is, Tortellini definitely exists. The second thing that you hear is, don't make me do it. Okay, I look over at Benny and say, this is it. This is actually perfect. Let's go, go, go right now. We got to move. Okay, okay, while okay. While they're doing whatever the fuck it is they're doing in there, screaming about dogs not existing. <laughs> Benny runs away from you into the boys' camp, and you can hear some shuffling around before he gets out and runs over to the supply room. What do you want to do? I want to fall into the supply room. Okay. You go into the supply room and he installs the fuse and the generator is now back up and running. The power turns on. All of the lights on the camp suddenly go on. Back in the boathouse, everything is suddenly illuminated with light. Do we see anything new now that we can see around the boathouse? You can see how crazy you all fucking look. Does the radio turn on? The radio does turn on. Don't destroy it. We can use the radio to call for help. Swear to me that you'll join the groundskeeping team with that on. I can't resign my fate. I should be the captain of the football team and maybe president someday. <laughs> Aren't you already 18? <laughs> Someday, I said. <laughs> Chuck Derricksworth is a junior in, in high school okay. still. No, a sophomore. Okay. <laughs> you swear to me that you'll leave the camp counselors and join the groundskeeping team. I won't burn this radio. I'll never join your groundskeeper team. I throw the radio down. <laughs> I throw the no! lighter down. No! <laughs> Do I see the fire? Is it successful? <laughs> I think everyone can see the fire. This is a perfect representation of it. You run towards the boathouse and you enter and you see quite a scene. You see a dog who is still the fuck asleep. You see everyone else uh, huddled over a very controlled fire, which is surprisingly oh. not really burning anything else because the gasoline was poured so well. And the cradle of the metal boat. And the cradle of the metal boat is not allowing the fire to spread to anywhere else. I Although, guess I am a smart man. If the fire uh, continues to go, uh, um, it will sort of overtake the boathouse. Chuck wants to try and put the fire out with the ax. Okay. I'll put it out. And you're good with strong things, Very right? strong and so, stupid. <laughs> so you do not have to make a pull. Chuck Derrickson starts slashing and hacking at, <laughs> at the ham radio and is somehow able to, through sheer force of will, put the fire out. And thankfully- I did it does not damage the boat, but does leave a bunch of new scratches in it. How's the ham radio? The ham radio is fucked. Oh, uh, shit. Damn it. Does the boat still, the boat's okay? Oh wait, is there any, there is not any I gasoline left. 
Oh, God and uh, the it. drinking gas. The drinking gas had the least amount of gas of the three. And that's the one that was grabbed. And that was the one that was grabbed. I, I look at the drinking gas canister and I say, hmm, oh, interesting. As you guys are talking, you can hear the unmistakable sounds of footsteps coming from outside. I recognize Thunk. that sound. What is it? <laughs> it's the sound of footsteps. They're approaching. <laughs> they're approaching the the door, the entrance to the boathouse. <laughs> come from Oh yeah, this the boathouse is fucked yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's covered in smoke. You hear the footsteps get closer and then in the entrance to the doorway, you see Benny Russo. Benny Russo is standing there and he looks around and he goes, wow, what the fuck happened here? This is absolutely, ah! A machete pops through the chest oh of Benny oh Russo. Oh my God! Benny! As the machete gets lifted up, Benny's body slides off and he falls down dead. Standing behind Benny Russo is a giant, hulking, massive figure who is masked by a burlap sack and wielding a machete. This is the man who killed Jeremy Hogwood. I and knew it! And now he looks like he's about to kill you. But we'll pick that up next week on Killer at Camp Kiki Mama. <laughs> <laughs>